right here. I mean, <laughs> you, 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 just, you, you just in the thick of it right now. All this and more coming up right on Tech Pulse. So we're going to see you right after the break. Time, but we are back and we're here to talk about the um, the Apple one now many of you know uh, because we talked about this a while back when I said a while back I mean uh, I think it was maybe a, a, a month or so back we talked about the Apple one being uh, auctioned off um, because there's only a few of these things uh, in existence and the Apple one that uh, was auctioned off sold for six hundred and forty thousand dollars you know I mean uh, the people clearly this is a nostalgia item that people want now there are only about six working Apple one computers still left not in the US but they're saying in the world there's only about six working Apple ones there, there's parts probably you know crushed or something like that but six fully functional fully working Apple one computers left in the world and earlier this week one shattered the record of that Apple One that we talked about a month ago that sold for $640,000. It shattered at auction by over 30 Gs. That's why 30 large, this thing sold for $671,400, uh, this, this, this Apple One machine. Uh, this is the first, and uh, this, and uh, Apple, the, uh, the Apple First is the first Apple machines ever built. So. So new, in fact, that they were built inside Steve Jobs' parents' garage. That's where these particular Apple ones were made. These weren't made in a factory. These weren't made out there. These particular Apple ones that people have were made in Steve Jobs' parents' garage back in 1976 when the computer was little more than a vision uh, uh, trying to be turned into reality. The computer was sold along with the original owner's manual and a signed letter to the original owner of the machine, Frank Hartfield, from Steve Jobs. And I mean, when you, when you see this thing, I mean, this is what we are talking arcade. This thing is made of wood and everything. I mean, the only 200 Apple um, ones were ever made. They only made, because remember, they manufactured this stuff in Steve Jobs' parents' garage. You know, so it's not like they had some big factory. They, they, they started out in Steve Jobs' parents' garage and they made about 200 of these things, about 50, sorry, 50, um, uh, there's about uh, 50, uh, 44 to uh, 50 broken systems in addition 
to uh, six working systems that are expected to be floating around the world. You know, 44 to about 50 uh, broken systems that are intact, but they just don't work. And then about six working systems in the world. The other 150 were junked or scrapped by their respective purchases, um, according to various reports by CNET. But just take a look at this Apple One. I mean, this thing, I mean, uh, this is definitely nostalgia. I mean, and to get the machine that was built in Steve Jobs' garage with the original letter. That tells you about uh, how these things were made back then because today you buy a TV, you're not getting any letter from the CEO of, of Samsung or Sharp or, who, or Sony or whatnot saying thank you for buying this TV. There's a, a manual. Matter of fact, you don't even get a manual anymore. It's all digital. They give you a, a disc or a CD or something like that that has the manual on it and they'll say thank you for purchasing this thing. But, you know, I mean, no CEO handwritten letter. I mean. Look at this bad boy right here. This thing is, you know, from 1976. This was, and look, and look, look at how Apple is on it. This thing just says Apple. You know, I mean, let me see if I zoom that in a little bit more. It just, it's like somebody just wrote, you know, with a pen. I mean, and this thing is made of wood. Look at that keyboard. It's like someone just wrote with like a marker or something, Apple computer on this thing. That was what Steve Jobs, his one of, of the first 200 that he made, period, in starting the company Apple. And I mean, hey, this thing sold for $671,000. I mean, I, when, I, when I saw this story, I was looking around, you know, Devin's place to see if I'd seen it. Because only someone with uh, those type of deep pockets could afford this type of luxury idea. So I was looking around, I didn't see it. You know, probably he have it hidden because, you know, he don't want me to, you know, bust it up and so forth. But... You know, I mean, that, that right there is just, that's nostalgia right there. To, I mean, but it also is a testament to me of how you have a company that literally started, because a lot of people look at Steve Jobs, you know, I mean, even though he's dead now, but they look at Apple and they look at how big Apple is and they just say, man, you know, Apple is, you know, gigantic, blah, blah, blah. But they don't realize that Apple, and especially a lot of the younger people who use all these iPhones, but they don't realize that Apple started in a garage. You know, and not even Steve Jobs' garage, his parents' garage. You know what I'm saying? The guy didn't even have a house of his own. And he started this multi-billion dollar industry. And this was one of the first computers that he built and sold out there on the market, you know, in 1976. So, I mean, that to me, that's just a testament of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, ingenuity and someone who's, who's willing to work hard. And, 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 you know, now, obviously, his family and other people benefit from the fact that of all this hard work and stuff like that. So if you're someone who has those deep pockets and you might want to get one of the only, there's only six of these things in, in um, only six of these things in the world. You know, that's all, that's it. There's only six working Apple computers in the world. And if you have big cash, because this guy who paid $671,000, you're not going to sell it. For six hundred seventy-one thousand dollars, you know, if he sell it, he's looking to get a profit. Or matter of fact, he may not even sell it because that clearly is a collector's item for uh, whoever is buying this thing. So hey, if you got those type of deep pockets, you know, go go right to it. And speaking of people with deep pockets, we're gonna go back to our old buddy Google. We're gonna go right back to our old buddy Google and talk about the fact that. Now you know that Google Fiber, if you've been watching Tech Pulse, you know about Google Fiber. Google Fiber is Google's gigabit internet service that they came out with. They started in Kansas, and then they went to um, um, Utah, and then they went to uh, Austin, Texas, and they went to uh, back to another city in Kansas, and they're planning on rolling out um, a few more cities before the end of the year. But now Google is saying that they have plans to launch wireless internet. Now, here's here now, before you get excited and say, man, imagine a wireless internet infrastructure to where you don't need a, a, a modem coming into your house or anything like that. The wireless internet is already set up and your community already, so you have an eternal hotspot. Imagine that. You go anywhere and you can log in because the Wi-Fi is everywhere as opposed to like now, you have Wi-Fi in your house and your little surrounding area, you have Wi-Fi. But if you're connected to this Google wireless internet service that's going to be wireless for communities, not wireless for your house, because you already have that. Once you have the internet hooked up, you know, your computer is wireless and you can just go wherever you want to in your house, even in your backyard and use it. We're not talking about that. Google is planning on coming out with wireless internet 
for communities where you wouldn't need that box because the wireless internet would be like a gigantic hotspot. But before you get excited about this, the goal, according to Google, they're saying that the company is continuing to further their fiber efforts, but is also looking to start providing wireless internet service, but only in select markets. They say the goal will be to give internet access to people in more rural areas, such as Southeast Asia, uh, the, uh, Africa, and places like that. And however, the plan goes further than that. Apparently, a few large cities will be equipped with Google's wireless internet service, primarily ones that already have fiber. So when you're talking about Kansas, you're talking about Austin, Texas, you're talking about um, Utah, those places that already have Google Fiber, Google is saying they will have the infrastructure for them to set up a wireless internet service. Now, Google is currently talking with South African uh, regulators to have restrictions removed in order to be able to build the necessary equipment they need to provide this service uh, to the people. Now, Google, is, uh, other than that, Google is very tight-lipped on the subject. They're not saying much, but according to Slash Gear, this is another um, uh, online magazine publication, Google uh, invested, uh, is quite invested in this endeavor. The company has apparently looked into satellite-based services before, but hasn't gotten the plan off the pre-development floor quite yet. Google is currently working with local telecommunication companies to try to make arrangements for their new system, but no official word of any type of partnerships or any type of signings have been made. Now, will Google end up bringing, uh, uh, bringing the internet to the entire world while creating a massive monopoly on the industry? Because it looks like this is where they're headed. They, they're, they look like they're trying to head to be the internet provider you know, of countries, not just various cities here in the U.S. because they're trying to bring this thing to South Asia. They're trying to bring this thing to Africa and they're going so far as to talk with African regulators to get the laws changed so they can build the infrastructure to, to add um, wireless internet to these uh, rural areas, you know, like areas that don't have a lot of electricity and stuff like that. If you have a computer, you can still get online. So with Google's current position, it doesn't seem too far fresh to say the company might very well uh, own uh, uh, every aspect of internet service, you know, in the near future if they keep doing this type of thing. I mean, Devin, do you think that this, I mean, what do you think about, first of all, the fact of having wireless internet service provided for an area as opposed to you have wireless internet in your house or whatnot, but Google is saying that they can set up wireless internet, let's say for um, South Florida to where they have uh, the infrastructure and they set up various towers and whatever other equipment they need to provide to where you don't need any modems in your house. Your entire, the entire South Florida area is one gigantic hotspot. So you can carry your computer anywhere, whether you're driving, whether you're doing whatnot. Do you think this is something that Google can accomplish um, given their, uh, you know, their technology, given how they, um, how they, uh, Let's see, how, how do I put it? How they um, uh, advance technology and how, how, you know, their deep pockets, obviously. Do you think this is something that Google can uh, eventually bring, especially to countries like South Asia and Africa, where they have a lot of those safari and rural areas that are, are poor and, you know, people can't afford um, uh, the internet as far as, like, the traditional way of having internet wired to their homes and stuff like that. Do you think this is something that this is too ambitious for Google, or is this something that's right, right in line with what Google does? Devin is like, Devin is looking and saying, huh? Whoa, 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 what do you, <laughs> what do you say? We're talking about uh, Google coming up with wireless internet for not just your home, because we all have wireless internet, you know, in your house that you can go outside and stuff like that. But they're saying they want to bring wireless internet to communities. In other words, so uh, Coral Springs will be one gigantic hotspot or South Florida is one gigantic hotspot. So you walk outside.